Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trendsetter DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called Vanilla Ice. The ingredients you need to make a vanilla ice are three ounces of gin, two ounces of amaretto, two ounces of double cream, one teaspoon of lemon curd, a fourth teaspoon of vanilla paste, and a handful of ice and some edible flowers to serve. So you're gonna put the gin, the amaretta, the double cream, the lemon curd, and vanilla paste into a cocktail shaker with a handful of ice and shake until the outside of the shaker feels very cold. You'll kind of see it icing up. Strain into two small cocktail glasses or coupe glass and garnish with the edible flowers before serving. And that is a vanilla ice. Mmm, it sounds so tasty and refreshing. It does. Welcome back to Cocktails Dirty Discussions, you guys. Hey, y'all. So, how was your trip? Oh, Kiki, it was so... It's, first of all, it feels like it's been a minute since we sat down in this studio. It's been literally a month. A whole month. So, I'm, I want to make sure I don't leave anything out. But um, So, I didn't just get back from Brazil. Kind of. Been about the two-week mark since we're recording this. Um... Brazil was never on my list of places I just needed to see before I check out of this place. Like it just, mm -hmm. I, I think it's the people are beautiful. I really wanted to get a Brazilian wax, which I quickly <laughs> was told when I got there, they were like, what are you talking about? Like America really <laughs> like does Like French this, fries? Like French fries. <laughs> like I was really like, I when we checked into our hotel, um, I was like, you know what? I didn't get a wax. And so I was, I didn't get a wax because I was like, I didn't look it up beforehand. I was just- I was gonna say, you didn't look it up? I didn't. I was just Ugh. like, when I get there, I'm gonna go to a spa and I'm gonna get a Brazilian wax in Brazil. Fuck y'all, that's what I'm doing. That's the type of life I'm like, living. I asked that lady at the front, first of all, for real, for real, nobody in Brazil speaks English. It's one of those places where it's like, they have no want or desire to even to try. They're like, I don't, what? They're speaking Portuguese, French, and everything else but English. Mm -hmm. So I was asking the lady, I was like, you know, could, where could you suggest like a really good spa for me to get a Brazilian wax? And she was like, Brazil, hmm? Brazil wax? And I was like, a Brazilian wax. And so she- I want my pussy wax. Right, I want it smooth, <laughs> I want it. <laughs> yeah. So she asked the manager to come and he did speak English and he was like, Brazilian wax. And he was like, oh, so then I was like, you know what, let me Google real quick. So me and Ayana Googled like, where could you get a Brazilian wax in Brazil? And it, everything was like, that's like an American thing. Now you can go to a spa and just ask them to take everything away, but it's not like it's this profound Special thing. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I was like. <laughs> So did you just go get a wax? I anywhere? did it. I had hairy puss <gasps> the whole time I was there, and oh. I only and I forgot to bring my bathing suit. I only brought one bathing suit, and it was my Jamaican bathing suit, which, by the way, I absolutely love. So I wore that bathing suit every day while I was there. So good thing I had my Lumi. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> um, but Brazil was beautiful. Like I'm like I can't believe I didn't have it as the list of places that I ever wanted to see because I really appreciate what I got from Brazil. Uh -huh. um, definitely like enjoyed the beaches. We were right on the beach with the hotel. One thing that I love about Paradise and Vibe is they gonna pick a really nice hotel. You gonna feel lavish. You are gonna feel like you got flued out by a rich African man, um, <laughs> but you didn't. Unless you did. So the hotel was nice. The beach, so much fun. The people were amazing. Um, the dinners were were just really grand. I didn't really love the food because I'm not a huge carnivore like that. I do mm -hmm. eat meat, but I'm not just like a person where it's like I need prime rib, I need steak, I need fresh slices of every type of animal you could think of. And that's <laughs> like what it was. Chicken heart. Have you ever had chicken heart? No, ma'am. They were serving chicken heart and they How do they serve it? Is it like grilled or fried or it's what? It's grilled. Mm. And and it looks literally like they just took the little heart out of the little chick and it's just there. You even see the little hole like from where they have the plucked it from. Bow. They don't try to make it look cute or anything. It's mm -hmm. just the heart and people were eating them like little nuggets. Mm. So I didn't I didn't eat that, but um, the, <laughs> the, when we went to um we did a we did went to the favela. And if you don't know what a favela mm -hmm. is, it's basically like the projects in Brazil, mm -hmm. rough area, if you let the the law enforcement tell it, or maybe even the white people tell it. But uh, we really wanted, a few of us really wanted to go and see like what it was like, but we wanted to make sure it was like appropriate for us to go and it wasn't like white people touching your hair and being like, ooh, mm -hmm. how do you get those braids in there? Yeah, yeah. And now we're all offended and you just went about this the wrong way. Like questions are okay, but you wanna make sure you're respecting people's culture. So we met a gangster while we were there and he took <laughs> us on a tour of the favela. He knew everybody. 
in the the whole favela. We were very safe. That's where I had the best food in the favela. What did you eat? I had some chicken wings. They were like charred chicken wings, and they were fr like doing them on the street, like in this brick little oven thing. Mm -hmm. I had I did try a little piece of pork. Y'all know I'm not a pork eater. Didn't love it, but I appreciated the taste and the flavor. Mm -hmm. um, I and just, everything is just cooked in this oven, it was, grill situation. In that area, it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. It was really good. Had a little lamb. Had a little, it was, everything was just really good. And so like we enjoyed breaking bread with the people in the community. We, um, we learned about like what the favela is and how it's really ran by the gang members. We saw drugs, and I'm act, I'm saying it with a shaky voice because it was like, <laughs> you know, when you like see drugs and your friends maybe you're just doing them. It's different from when you see like drugs and there's also like people walking around with big old bazooka guns and mm. and monkeys. And it was like we, I can only imagine. I haven't seen it in person like that. I was like, because at first I was like, yeah, and I'm gonna go and look, and I was like, I'm not gonna go and look. I'm not, not gonna business. go and look. I'm just gonna mind my business because this is not my world. But it was beautiful to see the people were beautiful. The the kids was working. We learned that. Like in the favelas, they the police aren't allowed to go into the communities. If the police step foot in the communities, they will be killed. It's like a it's almost like a war between the the, the, the gang police. members and yeah, and the, mm -hmm. the police know that they're not safe there. They will be outnumbered. And so they sit outside of the favela. Cause if the people, the gang member people and the drug dealers and stuff come out, then they're fair game to to get. But a lot of them, they have everything that they need in the favela, so they don't. So they're in there just running their own world. I'm talking about they they have rewired the power lines to get so that everybody in the favela gets free power. And if the <laughs> companies, if the companies try to come in and switch it, they will be it'll be a bad day for them okay they get free water they get free, like people are living in here and it's like from the outside you're like i ain't trying i mean you can't go to the beach i guess but they have everything they need there and there's like levels so there's like the bottom gutter part and then like it goes higher it's like mm -hmm. i mean and then there's like culture there everything isn't like you go in it's just like hey don't nobody got no sense and you're gonna get cracked over you and the guy was like people want you to think that because um they just can't, they don't have any rule over us. Now, mm -hmm. there was something like, they do have a, some gun wars going on. That's probably not okay. But he was like, the only time that- <laughs> Not probably. <laughs> the only time that there's violence is when somebody does something wrong. So he was like, let's say um, somebody got their phone stolen on the trip. It's, you got to really pay attention to That was Brazil. with you guys? Yeah, oh, it, it sucked. But they had told us, you really got to pay attention. You can't just have your backpack on your back. You have to turn it around. And people, you know, sometimes Americans be like, I'm American, y'all love us. Well, we also know you got iPhones and money. And who who loves mm -hmm. us because <laughs> right and so the guy was like like if that would have happened here in the favela whoever stole your phone they wouldn't even do that because they're gonna die so when people do a crime here the gang is gonna come and kill you it's not the, the gang is also helping the people i know this sounds very crazy because we don't live in it and that is probably not a fair you know that's not fair so um but but that's what works for them and the way that he spoke we also saw like they do this capoeira i think that's what it's called mm -hmm. dancing yeah. And there were kids, they were doing all this. I mean, it was just a, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful, ugly mess. But everybody, when we got, when we did our farewell dinner, I asked everybody, what was your favorite part of the trips? Because there was a slew of different excursions and different mm -hmm. moments. And everybody was like, they really enjoyed the favela. Um, one thing I love to do when I travel is go into areas like that because mm -hmm. you get to kind of like get outside of the touristy spots. Outside of the touristy spots, if it's going to be somewhat safe. So just so I just need a little somewhat of safe like so in in um it was somewhat safe we had to ride these little motorcycles up into the because it's literally like a journey to get up in there yeah we had to get on the motorcycles Kiki it was the most was it one person per? it was one person on each little bike and it's <laughs> it's on a one little street buses are coming down trucks are coming down we're going up and everybody has road rage and the motorcyclists have the most road rage like we're like bro we can really get tapped out like they you trying to challenge a bus a bus almost hit the the tip of my kneecap but i'm so happy that it didn't and i'm so happy that i got how did the bus almost hit your kneecap what they were, were just, you doing everybody just keeps going there's no there's no Why lights stop? and then eventually they stop when they realize okay we're gonna hit hit somebody they don't care that like we're coming to see how y'all living in the hood no i'm saying why didn't you stop if you see i'm the not bus. driving you're oh. on the back so the p they used to this so it's two people on this. it's yeah it's one okay because one... i'm thinking when you said it's one person on each motorcycle oh. that you're driving the motorcycle so oh, i'm like no, what I the fuck? Get... so it's two people there's on the a... driver and then they put one of us on the back okay. of them and so somebody else would i would have never did i now i'm adventurous but i know i'm not going to drive a, a motor vehicle i'm not okay. going to drive yeah, a car yeah that's why i was looking like what yeah, 
know, we would have, we probably would have all been on the Brazilian news. Why the fuck did y'all do this? Like, mm -hmm. so, but the people don't care that they're like, hold on. If you don't hold on, if you do fall off, you have to remember, we're not in America. They're like, y'all want to come oh, and see okay. this mm -hmm. and you paying us the money. But if you don't make it out, that's not on us. Like you okay. wanted to do this. And so anyways, like, but just the whole experience was super dope. It was, it was like, I had an <sighs> adrenaline rush. Um, really enjoyed my time members of the people were beautiful. Carnival went to Carnival. What was that like? It was a lot. It was in a lot. In what way? In like, just like so many people, not a lot of organization in like the actual event. And then, so we did a blocko. The blocko What's was that? a lot, like there were some, they're just so happy about- What's a blocko? It's like a block party, but okay. a, a block party on steroids. I'm talking about, there was no area where you could turn and just like, just get a little fresh air. There was somebody in your face at all times, oh. men trying to kiss you. It, we were very submerged in the culture. We, mm -hmm. we got on the subway to even be more submerged in the culture to get to the Blocko. Mm -hmm. That only happened once because it just, it was a <laughs> lot. It was a lot and uh, people loved the Blocko. I didn't enjoy it because it was just a lot of touching and mm -hmm. feeling and then being no so space. excited. About, yeah, yeah, no space. And uh, Carnival was interesting. I've never been to it. Oh no, I went to um, Toronto Carnival. Mm -hmm. um, it was really cool to see like the floats. And the how intricate these big, huge float, huge floats are. They had a school that came through in the parade, and it was dedicated to black women, and it was all black dancers and African. I mean, it was just beautiful. Like I didn't realize how much African culture is in the roots yeah. of Brazil, and so just being able to really experience that with my own eyes, and I didn't think I needed that, and mm -hmm. I did. Brazil gave me everything I didn't know I needed, so. It was super dope. Um, if anybody wants to travel with me, we are going to Fiji in July. So go to ParisandVibe.com and come with us because it's just traveling. Like I always say, is very important. It's eye opening. It's fun. It's so you get to have a break from what we're used to in our lives. Mm -hmm. So super dope. How was Saint Lucia? Saint Lucia was good. Saint, my trip was not a big adventure trip. It was mm -hmm. more like relaxing. Saint Lucia. I um I wanted to go because I've seen pictures of it mm -hmm. and it looked really beautiful, but. I I really wanted a chance to be able to relax and like disconnect from everything and any stressors in my life mm -hmm. and put my toes in the sand, be on the beach and relax. And mm -hmm. I definitely got to do a lot of that. Um, that island is very chill compared to a lot of the other Caribbean islands. And it's a very small island too. Um, one day though, we did go to the, I think you say it, Pitons. It's like, okay, so when you Google St. Lucia, you always see these two like mountain things. And mm -hmm. I think that they used to be volcanoes. They're not active anymore, but mm -hmm. they do have like another volcano. And that's where the sulfur spring was that we went to, but we went to hike it. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, well, I already know I'm not hiking to the top. I don't think I can make it up there because this is like real hiking. How this many is not miles like was Stone it? Mountain, four miles. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and like the terrain, it's very rocky. There's no path on there. This is like, like I'm looking at the people when we got to the place, I'm looking at the people who are in the group ahead of us. Mm -hmm. They had on like those packs where it's like water with the straw mm -hmm. like on their back, like a backpack, but it doesn't look like a water bottle because you're hiking and so you don't want to have to carry that. Oh, like the camel packs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw people with those. Um, I rented a hiking stick. Nobody else in the group did. And I said, fuck that, because if I fall off the side of this mountain, that is going to be tragic. And I was already a little iffy because I'm like, ooh, my foot is hurting today. I don't ooh. know how that's going to go. It's so many rocks. So uh, needless to say, I stopped at the first lookout point and I was like, I'll see y'all when y'all come back down. There was a bench. I rested there. I met lots of people, everybody who was coming and going. Mm -hmm. um, and I enjoyed the views from there. And I had to look at everybody's pictures because they went up, but they only made it to the second one. Mm -hmm. Now they tell you that it's like beginner friendly. And then once you get to the halfway point, when you proceed from there, it goes from like moderate to expert. That shit is not beginner friendly. Um, I'm a beginner. It's not for beginners. It's for moderate to adrenaline seekers i would say mm -hmm. so just know that if you ever go um so we did that we saw like beautiful waterfalls just look being able to go to so many different high points mm -hmm. on that island was really cool there's a rainforest there we were gonna go do this um chocolate bar making class mm -hmm. but it was so far away we were tired that day mm -hmm. and it just didn't happen we did um we did one of those cruises um, and there was like a wreck or something happened. So the original time we were going to do the cruise didn't work out. But I love that 
every time something went wrong, we were able to pivot and do something else and it made it so much more fun. We ended up doing a night cruise and that was really mm. cool. Um, we met a lot of people who were from there who were very knowledgeable about the island, telling us all kinds of different things. We did a food tour, it's like a walking tour. And um, we did a rum tasting. They gave us this rum that had like weed in it mm. and pineapple. And I was like, I was a little scared, um, but it left me feeling good. Um, there was, I wasn't really crazy about their food. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of Caribbean food, I'm just not super crazy about it. Only Jamaican. Mm -hmm. But I did go to one restaurant called Big Chef Steakhouse. And it's actually like a fusion of a bunch of different stuff. But that food was so good. Service was excellent. When I walked in, the host was like, oh, I love your dress. Let me move this furniture out the way. We're going to take some pictures. So we was having a little photo shoot mm -hmm. in the front of the restaurant while we were waiting for the table to get ready. And it was just a good time. But um, it was nice to meet new people. I had never traveled with this group before. And um, neither did the other people who were there. So it was nice to meet so many different ladies and personalities and just the people at the resort the people at the different places that we went to mm -hmm. it was a good experience I, love I loved it I speaking of like group travel which I at first like I had never done group travel before like I had never been on like me being like oh I see this travel group and I'm gonna go mm -hmm. I think it's the best way to see the world because you can either do what you want to do and you know you still have a group there with you or you can join the group and meet new people like Kiki said mm -hmm. I really love interacting with the people People that come on the trips, which are a lot of cocktails listeners. And I met a few listeners. Um, first of all, there's a lot of reoccurring cocktails listeners that come, but there were one girl came and brought her boyfriend. She was super dope. And uh, there's another girl named Jessica. She didn't make it on this trip, but I wanted to give her a shout out because she came on the first Paradise and Vibe trip, which was in Jamaica, and we didn't know what we were doing. Ayana just hit me up and was like, "We, me and Cassandra had this idea to start this company. Uh -huh. Can you help us get people to come? I was like, bitch, I don't really know. I could try, but like, let's, let, let's we could see. try. You don't even mm -hmm. got to pay me for real. Like, let's just, because I don't know if this is going to be beneficial. And yeah. so we did it. It was dope. There was this girl named Jessica. Shout out to Jessica. She's now my friend. She came to Jamaica and um, she had shared this story with me after, maybe a year later. She um, now works with Paradise and Vibe. But when she first came on the trip, she said that she saw me. And I thought, tell me if you experienced this. When I first go on some of the trips, I always have to ask people, how did you hear about, how did you hear about the trip? Because some people don't just come out and say, oh, I listen to the show. And you don't know if they've heard about it from me or through Ayana or through Essence. And so... I'll be wanting to know. And so <laughs> Jessica said in Jamaica, she was like, I, it was so crazy because I saw you in Jamaica and I stood behind you in line when we were getting food or something. And she she was like, and I saw you. And I was like, I'm not going to talk to her. her. And <laughs> Why? <laughs> she said, I said it in my head. And she was like, and you came around and you were like, hi, how are you doing? And she was like, she said in my head again. I was like, this fake bitch. Like, <laughs> she... <laughs> And I'm not even going to be talking to her like, yeah, I came on the trip because of her, but I'm not about to tell her that. And she was told me the story. She was like, oh, fake. She's not really nice. She's probably going to be rude. She's probably going to be mean. And I was like, Jessica, you really thought? She was like, I really thought that. And then she was like, one day when we were going on one of the excursions, you came on the bus and you 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 just kept talking to me. And she was like, and then I realized you were so nice. And like the I say all that to say is that the bonding and the friendships that have been made from group travel and the the um, opportunities that have been made available for some people um, are just incredible to be able to know that you can speak to people who have not met us in real life and maybe do have like these thoughts or mm -hmm. ways that they think you would be or they think I would be. And so to be able to spend this quality time with you guys, it is really special to my heart because yes, you need to see the world, but also I, I know that I don't like it when people think that I'm gonna be some sort of way and it's negative or it's just you think I'm gonna be any type of way because n nine times out of 10, it is the total opposite of whatever you're thinking because we don't really know each other. And so getting to really know people on these trips and make sure I'm present, that's one thing I've learned on these group travel trips is to make sure I am present with everybody that is there, whether you're there for me or not. Mm -hmm. And it has just been a beautiful experience. And I hope that 
you got to connect like that with people as well. Because sometimes people just be so nervous. And group travel alone, whether you got a podcast yeah. or not, people just are nervous to meet new people. I think um, it's also like a challenge to a lot of people to step out of their comfort zone. Some people are very shy. Mm -hmm. Some people are timid. Some people, they are fearful of how anyone will react, whether it's me or somebody else that's on the trip or whatever. And it's like you really have to step outside of that, especially when you show up to something and you don't have a friend to lean on. You don't know anybody there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, are you going to have a time where you're not really talking to anybody unless somebody talks to you? Or are you going to say to yourself or what? One of the ladies, it was her birthday mm -hmm. um, or her birthday weekend when we got back. Um, she was celebrating and she was saying how usually she does something with one of her best friends because their birthdays are so close together. And I don't know what happened as to why they didn't take a trip together this year, but she heard about it on the show and she was like, I'm going to come. And mm -hmm. I'm so glad that she did because it's like you would have missed out on an opportunity to see a place that you had never been. The only person who had been was Denny, the host that runs the company. Um, none of us had been before. Mm -hmm. So it was just nice to be able to have that experience and talking to people. And at first she didn't say that she listened to the show either we have been talking she was asking me what i do for a I living that and stuff. is so crazy <laughs> when people she's like, like so what do you do for a living so i was like oh she didn't hear about co from cocktails and then later she's like yeah i was listening to your podcast i'm like now girl why you was asking me <laughs> these questions <laughs> but yeah and she lives in atlanta wow yeah Yo. So, but yeah it was a good time um i definitely think that if you have ever thought no matter what uh what company you may find or what location you may find to take a trip. Um, if you are afraid to travel alone, because there is safety that you have to consider, like everybody doesn't want to just go somewhere for real, for real by themselves and do all the planning because that's another part that mm -hmm. can be stressful. I would challenge you to try it. It's usually fun. You'll probably meet other like-minded people because y'all are all there for some reason. To me, it feels like when you go to college and you don't know nobody mm -hmm. and you got to make friends. first day of school and mm -hmm. you're like, oh, where am I going to sit at lunch? But then it's like, we all chose this place mm -hmm. because we have something in common. So I just think y'all should get out there and try it out. It's, it's not scary because uh, this was my first group trip like that. Well, no, we did the other one, but you were there. Uh, when we did the worst behavior tour trip to Jamaica, that was a group and trip. And we brought men with us. When you got a man by yourself, it's a little hit. Yeah, little it's like right. I wasn't by myself. And then even if the guys didn't want to be out or whatever, they could have been in the room. We, we still had each other. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't totally like brand new. Also, I want to add in, speaking of guys, this is for you too. It's, I don't know. like The Paradise and Vibe trips, men are welcome to come unless you hear otherwise. It's mm -hmm. I love when the more that we grow, people are bringing their husbands, bringing their boyfriends, because we also focus on mental health. There are different workshops. With Brazil, it was just focused on play, so we didn't have workshops. But normally there's workshops where it's like meditations, yoga every morning, and it's a beautiful way to connect with your person. Um, so I'm always telling people, let's say you always forget to plan an anniversary trip or you got mm. a family and you forget to plan family vacation. This is a very easy way for you to get back in good graces with your person or just plan a good anniversary trip, a, a good a birthday. birthday trip. You trying to get flued out with this, with a bae, but you're nervous about going to see him in his home. Be like, baby, let's do this group trip. Cause you don't have to stay with us. You can do all the things or you don't have to do all the things, but you know, you're in a hotel that's already been vetted. You know that you're going to be safe. And if you do want to interact and do the workshops, and join with the people you can, but you can make your own itinerary. So keep that in mind. Men, you could come, bring your friends, bring your girlfriend, bring your wife. Like, don't be scared to do that either. Um, yeah, there was something else that I wanted to um, tell you about. Um, oh, last month's Patreon Live. Oh. No, 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 okay. no. Did you want to say anything else about your trip? Mm -mm. Last month's Patreon Live, it was such a good time. It was. We didn't really have an agenda. We were just chit-chatting. People were venting. Those are my favorites, honestly, because I feel like the people on Patreon, we get to know them a little better. We mm -hmm. can check in with people. Yeah. Um, Y'all got some personalities on there. Even the people who be on there with their cameras off, Fake names on the screen, mm -hmm. just listening. We love y'all too, because I know y'all be laughing in the background, and thank you for putting it on mute while the kids back there screaming. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we had a good time. It was a really, we stayed on there for what? Almost three hours. Bro. It was like an hour and a half. We started it at, at 7.30. 7.30. And you got off at a little after nine because you had that live. It was about an hour. And yeah, half. it was <laughs> three hours. It felt like three hours. I was like, bro, this is supposed to be done at 8.30. It was 9.30. But I was home. 
hungry and trying to do my benefit. But it was so well worth it getting to know everybody. Um, did you watch Mia Koopa? No, I did not. You did? I'm so shocked. I just knew you were going to say you watched it. No, I didn't. Um, it's on my list. Okay. But I haven't watched a lot of TV in the past, I would say, two weeks. Okay, then tell me when you watch it and then we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. I did finish Griselda and I know this episode that I talked about Griselda, it was a while ago, but I hadn't finished the episode yet and I was really talking about Griselda in a positive way. And yeah, I, and I was like, oh, just keep I, watching. I immediately, and I mean immediately, when the show was, I was like, oh, that's a was wild girl. Devil. She was the de the chip. I don't want to ruin it for y'all. So this is a spoiler alert. Log well, off if history. you don't know what happened. Yeah, then all thing. the children died except for the baby boy. I was really shocked at what was going on in that woman's life. She lost her mind, and I really think she had she had mental illness. I think it was all the crack, Cr the cocaine, the alcohol, among everything else. And then I think that um, she just. She had been scarred as a child. Like That's what I'm saying. There was so much that just she never got to fix and work through. Yeah, but you know, it is what it is. Mm. I, have, I did enjoy watching it. And I'm glad I was not a part of any of that shit because that was a wild life to live. Her little girl she got from uh, Columbia that came up there and was staying in the house, beheaded, just... She was it's like, so wow. Pretty. I mean, she didn't do that to them, but it happened. And, and it was I, just like, okay, moving on. I just always find it shocking in the drug dealer shows and movies when, like, what you've been doing to everyone else starts happening to you and they acting so shocked. Like, they're act you're acting like you've just been living this same. I think people be having a God complex. Like, they feel like they're above that and nobody can touch me. They and touched that's what it her. Is. They touched them. Touched all y'all. Ooh, not a life for me. And when I see the drug shows, I'll be looking at people like when I see the little water boys or people selling drugs, I'm like, do you know that this has no positive ending? Get out. But sometimes, you know, people be stuck, uh, stuck in bad situations or they don't know any better. Or they, they don't have anybody in their life that's telling them you don't have to do this forever. There's another way out. It's sad. It's very sad. You better find somebody. I'm telling you right now because that's a wild way to go out. Um, Was me a couple good? No, oh. and yes. I'm gonna so say, you want me to watch it, but you no, said it's because not it, good? It, no and yes. Because, okay, I'm not, I did finish it. Okay. And I, when I was watching it, I was like, in the beginning, I was like, okay, look at Tyler switching it up. And then he 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 locked you in. And then at, towards the end, he did what Tyler does and, and, and this craziness it going on. Ridiculous. The whole story was like, wait, what happened? But I will say I kept watching because whoever styled the the women in the show they did a really great job and I was really looking at the outfits like wow and I was looking at Kelly Rowland's wig like this wig is flawless and that's mm -hmm. really what kept me going and <laughs> I love Beyonce that's her best friend so why wouldn't I support but it was I mean it it wasn't the best movie but Kelly did a great job it was just jumping all over the place and then mm -hmm. when I saw that you know kudos to Tyler Perry but he wrote directed and produced it it was like maybe like we should have added in a little <laughs> maybe we need to add in a little mix mix of who does what in here <laughs> but um well it wasn't horrible okay it was like a good little corny saturday afternoon watch okay well um, maybe <laughs> if i get bored over the weekend or find some free time i'll i'll check it out they do this thing every first friday at the high museum that i have been wanting to go to because i've seen it on instagram and tiktok and it was so cute it looks so lit and i was hesitant to go because i they do this at the firm bank too mm -hmm. and i went to the one at the firm bank how and was that it was horrible it was oh, at what the, the way it? that they shot it and put it on instagram the fern bank night at the firm bank is like I've seen that you feel like you're at a dare dance but the, the night that they recorded and the one that goes around on Instagram it don't look like that it felt like I was at a a dare dance with with little kids I think that one's 18 and up the high museum one is 21 and up and mm. very black okay I loved it like it was it, it was so much fun and just so different like you go, you the tickets sell out very quickly and you can't buy them at the door. So they send you a reminder, you know, go on the website and look for yourself. But every first Friday, there's a DJ. People are dancing at the bottom. There's drinks. Mm -hmm. And you can still go up and look at all the art. And right now they have some amazing exhibits. I mean, I had a real, I felt like I was out of town. Hmm. I felt like I was out of town. Now, um, there were a lot of people there on dates, but there were a lot of um, 
single gay men. So like, I like to be clear on what you're going, what to expect. It was a lot of single gay men. So if you are a single gay man and you looking for a man, they was there. Um, there was a few listeners that I met there. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, I will just say it was a nine out of 10. It was a really, really, oh, really good. good time. It was so much fun. Like, it just, yeah, I've seen people post about it, but I've never been. Yeah, it was, it, no food is there, but they got drinks, they got the art, and it was just made for great conversation. People were dancing. It's a great date night. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, oh, I went to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. How was it? It was cool. It was great. My boyfriend's parents came with us, and um, that was dope. His dad was like, why is everybody in jeans? They're old school. He had a mm -hmm. three-piece suit on, and I was like... Yeah, I dress up when I go to church. You do? I don't wear jeans. And I don't like it when it's the church where everybody's casual. I'm like, what's going on I'd, here? <laughs> I go between the two. It uh -huh. really depends on if I'm running late, if I woke up oh. late. But mm -hmm. I don't go in there looking a mess. Some people, it's like, bro, come on. But so anyways, like we get home from church and I get a DM from somebody. And the guy is like, wow, I saw your dopper, doppelganger this morning. And I was like, really? I was like, everybody always says that to me. I was like, well, wait a minute. Was she at church? And he was like, <laughs> yeah, at Live Atlanta. And I was like, that, that no was not me. <laughs> that was me. And he was like, really? And I was like, yes. That was what he you said. Think right, I would go to church? Yeah. And he sat right next to me. And like, I literally shook his hand. And you know what? At church, and they do a little now meet the people next to you. I hate that part of church. But they did that. And I was like, hi. Hi. Happy New Year. I always am saying Happy New Year because it's still kind of the beginning of the year. But it's just, <laughs> it makes me feel weird doing that. Anyways, I thought that was so funny. I was like, yeah, bro, that was me. I can talk that's about funny. little sexes and go praise the Lord still. <laughs> um, anyways, that's that's it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, I've been catching up with my line sisters, connecting with my line sisters. And that has felt so, so, so great. One mm -hmm. of my line sisters had a birthday party at Grant Park Social. And I went and we had such a good time um, dancing, catching up. Some people are pregnant, talking about babies mm. and just like future plans and who's doing what. And it just felt really good to to see everybody. So, yeah, um, yeah make sure y'all join Patreon. We got a lot of content up. Yeah. Up and coming. And that's already up there. So go to patreon.com slash cocktails and join order the game. Mm -hmm. I was also going to say, I uh, I forgot about this earlier when we were talking about the trip. I went to a block party situation, too. And it was it was in St. Lucia. And they um, they do it every Friday night. And basically everybody that was local there was like, this is what we do. And this is like, this is the night. Because we were like, where are the clubs and mm. stuff like that. And they were like, the club clubs have closed because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And there's like a few bars. And I ran into my friend Matt at a bar. That's so random. Um, and he was ran well, he wasn't randomly there. He was on a trip, but he was on a trip with his friends for someone's birthday. And so we just happened to run, in run into each other when Juvenile was playing Back That Ass Up at some place on the street. And I was like, we have to go in here because mm -hmm. this is my song. I love this song. And I go inside and I'm like, these people look like they really know this song for real. And then I'm looking at them and I'm like, wait a minute, a few of these faces look familiar. And then I saw him and I was like, hey. Uh, but yeah, we went to the street party and the, sh um, the the street party was really fun. It's like a big block party and they have DJs out there. They have music. There was enough space mm -hmm. to like turn around and breathe and stuff. So it wasn't too, too packed mm -hmm. um, right near the water, which kind of makes me nervous when people be drinking and you too close to the water. I just be like, and it's dark. Mm, stay mm -hmm. over here. But I had some really good food there too. That's what made mm -hmm. me think about it. Some grilled fish and uh, some kind of rice dish they had. It was delicious. Um, and then I have been working on trying to plan uh, all my girlfriends that are in town seem to be so busy lately. So we've been trying to plan more activities. So if y'all have some activities that are not like going to dinner because we've been trying to do more stuff, let me know what some places are that y'all have been seeing or have tried or whatever because we're looking for more stuff to do. And also join the book club. Um, this month we are reading a book called On Us. Last month we read Black girls must die exhausted and it was really good um to me now some people didn't like it it is it does kind of remind me of being mary jane mm -hmm. remember that show i loved being mary i jane. loved that i show can't too. believe that it got canceled and i didn't even think about the fact that there were so many parallels with the woman because she's a reporter she's like a news reporter and trying to be an anchor and all of this stuff and i didn't even think about it and one of the girls was like who picked the being mary jane book and i was like ah i didn't pick it y'all voted but um, I didn't even think about that. But sometimes it does get tiresome. And this was the critique that people had of the book. Why are so many of the black books like romance books? I'm really not a big romance 
person mm -hmm. but that one does have a lot of romance but it also has some other elements in there that were really good and one thing that I love about the book club is that we don't stick to one genre of books mm -hmm. and we will take suggestions and then do a poll and whatever wins will be the book that we read so this month we're reading on us I heard it's really really good I've seen a lot of great reviews on TikTok so if you're looking for some people to discuss books with or we do a little happy hour and mm -hmm. we just get together and chit chat we have done a couple of meetups and we will be doing more in the future that are in person. Um, so join us. It's cock not cocktail, sorry. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Kiki said so. And you um, can join there. When you were saying to give you things to do with your girlfriends, so mm -hmm. depending on how many people it is, because you don't want it to be too packed. Uh, a few days ago, my boyfriend was like, I have a surprise date for you. Mm. And I was like, okay, what are, we, what are we doing? What do I need to wear? What shoes do I need to wear? Because he's always bad at that. But anyways, mm, we get to the date. Important. And it was in that building that I've already told y'all about where the sober social is. And now I feel bad that I had told that I sent my espresso martini. But remember I told you, but I oh, was yeah. the their mocktails. <laughs> <laughs> and I sober, heard that this social. the sober. I thought that was just a cute anyway. They need to put it on the like it, anyways. Anyway, still a very cute place. Still love it. <laughs> so inside of that building, there's the sober social, but there's all these different other activities. And this where is, is this? It's again? black owned. It's it's not, it's off of, it's a street behind Walker Street. So it's in that okay. area. So mm -hmm. you know where Snob Life is? Yes. It's like, but it's in a little cut off corner. I don't know the name of the street. I'll send it to you. Cause okay. I, but it's in that area. Mm -hmm. um, so girl, there's this place called Scratch Out Loud. Scratch? Scratch Out Loud. It's a DJ mixing class. Kiki, when I tell you it was so I think much I've heard of this. It was so much fun. And they go, you learn about the history of, of records, which mm -hmm. it, this sounds boring, but it's it's not boring. You learn about stuff that you didn't even know that you did you didn't even know. Like I didn't know they used to put pieces of records on the back of milk cartons. And mm -hmm. you take the milk carton piece off and you could put it in your record player and play a sample of like um uh what is the Dream Girl movie made off of? What's the real group? The, the Supremes. It would be just mm -hmm. like a snippet of a single day. It was really cool. We learned all about records for like how the first long 10. Did it, how long was the It's about experience. a two and a half, maybe two hours. Because okay. you learn a little bit, you drink a little bit, and then you he lets you pick. There's all these records to pick from. You pick two, you pick up to six songs to put in your little thing. And then you start putting the records on. He teaches you how to mix and like, and then at the end you present it to the whoever's there with you. So I made up a DJ name and presented my mix. Mm -hmm. I use a little Beyonce um, and uh, and you present it to whoever you're there with. And then they go, it was, so, when I tell you it was so much fun, when people be saying there's nothing to do in Atlanta, I really just be like, you just you have trying? to get out and try to find something. You can't wait for it to come to you. And you also can't, if you find something that's different and you kind of read the description, you can't be like, this is probably going to be boring. I'm not going to do it. Cause it might not be boring. Like some people might think of like the first Fridays at the high museum is like, Oh, this is going to be boring. You I just got to try it and experience you gotta it try too, it because experience it. a description is a description or somebody Sharing their highlights might not be what interests you, but when you go and you feel the vibes, it could definitely be that. Bro, it was that sounds fun. I'm it was a lot of fun. Um, anyways, I guess we can move on to weird sex. Yes. Okay, so y'all hear me out. Do you ever wish that you could use deodorant on your feet? Mm -hmm. Or maybe the <laughs> crevice of the back of your kneecaps, or maybe right before intimacy, mm -hmm. you know, to freshen up in some areas. You don't want to stank up a room. I've been there before, before okay. I was using Lumi. <laughs> and you guys, I am so excited that I personally am still using Lumi because for real, for real, right before I got here, I worked out and I didn't have time to take a shower. So Ooh. Kiki can't even smell how stanky I, I really didn't. am. I, I, I lathered up in Lumi. Thank you, Lumi. <laughs> you're, okay. <laughs> you're welcome for doing that. Thank you, Lumi. Um, you guys, Lumi is powered by mandelic acid to deliver outrageous. You heard that, outrageous. 72 hour odor control everywhere from your pits to your feet. Yes, come on. Even your privates. In fact, it was patients' concern about private parts. 
odors that originally inspired the OBGYN who invented Lumi. So that makes me feel even better about using Lumi. It was invented by an OBGYN. So put it everywhere. Yes, I love that too. Let me tell you, when I was in St. Lucia, we went to, um, what is it called? Like the sulfur spring, the hot spring with the sulfur stuff. Oh, I stuff. know you needed it. And it smelled like boiled eggs. But the way that the order of the itinerary was, we still had somewhere else to go. And it was still outside. But who wants to walk around smelling like egg salad? Not me. Mm. So I had my Lumi wipes in my bag. I brought them. I shared with the other ladies as many as I could. I ran out and I was a little upset. But Lumi is great. We used them. We weren't funking up the place. We weren't stinky on the car ride because mm -hmm. it was like two hours back to the resort Lumi came in handy and it comes in handy every time I use it whether it's the wipes the whole body deodorant mm -hmm. I even use the acid body wash um, because I just mm. wanted to make sure once I got back to the resort that I got that smell up off me I use that and I smell great yeah. I got compliments. You guys, as we get into those, it's, it's starting to warm up in Atlanta. We're going to mm -hmm. be having pool days. We're going to be at brunch sitting outside. Your booty gets sweaty sitting on them lounge chairs. Mm -hmm. Like we said, Lumi is a safe deodorant that you can use anywhere on your body, your pits, under boobs. Now that I got titties, I'm learning that they sweat. Mm. They collect little pockets of sweat and stank. So Ooh. I put a lot of it under there. Your thigh folds, your belly buttons, butt cracks, vulvas, and feet, you guys. It was created by OBGYN. Keep that in mind. pH balance for safe use below the belt. Now, Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash and the wipes that I was just talking about, and free shipping. It's really handy if you just keep it in your luggage too for travel or your purse. Um, as a special offer for our listeners, new customers get $5 off the Lumi starter pack with code cocktails at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit Lumi Deodorant. And Use code cocktails. Remember, Lumi Deodorant, L U M E deodorant.com, and use code cocktails, C O C K T A L E S, and get your Lumi starter pack today. You said a man is not a necessity, a man is a luxury, like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. Okay, so this week's weird sex, this is um, a really sucky situation to be in. So this guy, he's 45 years old. I have no idea what his name is, and I'm sure he wouldn't want anybody to know this. Um, but it did happen in America. So he has a condition. Um what is it called? I forget what it's called, but basically in his penis, he was having trouble keeping it hard, right? And then he has a condition where the urethra has a lot of scar tissue and stuff, and mm -hmm. it's like shrinking, basically. So he has all of these issues going on, and he has been putting different objects inside of his penis to keep it hard. Right. So what one day he people? ends up at the hospital because him and his wife were trying to get it on. And instead of using whatever they had been using before, she gets um, a tube, not a tube, like a can mm -hmm. of insulation. And you know how, has, how some things have that little straw nozzle that hangs off the can. She puts that in there. Right. Mm -hmm. Then she accidentally pushed the little spray thing. So if you've never sprayed insulation out, it it expands and it hardens. So she sprays the stuff or she sprays it in his penis. It goes in there. It expands and hardens. Then as I'm reading the story, I'm like, this is so crazy. I know he's probably crying in pain and stuff because that's a little bitty hole to be having something go in there. And that's also an exit. So like what's going on? Anyway, I find out he waited three weeks to even go to the hospital. He waited until he was having trouble peeing and it was causing him pain. And I'm like, 
But then I guess if you have been sticking things in there, maybe it wasn't as painful and some people do find pleasure in that. Anyway, so he has to have this surgery, but because he has like the scar tissue in the urethra, he has all this other stuff going on with his penis. That shit is fucking broke. But he had these big like masses inside of his body down there in his genital area. They had to tear or cut a hole from his balls like his ball sack back to his anus they couldn't remove the material from the hole in there because of the scar tissue and just everything else he had going on and they had pictures of like all of this stuff it looks like when people get lipo and it's like fat or if you get a tummy tuck and you see the skin just sitting there it kind of looked like that it was just so much material that was there he had to have all these surgeries so he hasn't had reconstructive surgery yet uh, because he has to do a psychiatric evaluation first. Good. Because what is wrong with you? Um, and, you know, it's just a lot when you mess it up. So I don't know what it's like to have issues with incontinence and having issues keeping your dick hard. But um, I think that there might be other, I'm sure there are other safer options than sticking a bunch of random hazardous materials inside of your body y'all have got to be more careful like what is why would you think i wonder to use that something that could spray out because yeah you just had the little straw thing but you don't know what, what is gonna happen I remember and then what's in that that's like chemicals and stuff and then you're putting it inside of your body i won't even <sighs> let like there was i can't remember who this was that i was having sex with but somebody wanted to do whipped cream and like spray it inside of oh, my uh -uh. hole and eat so it. i can have a yeast infection well, for days like, and that's whipped cream and it's actually edible and the worst that would happen is a bacterial infection or a yeast infection yeast infection it's like but still no like no what's wrong with y'all I don't know, but that's weird sex this week. So Batman has, um, he can't use his penis right now. So just keep him lifted up in prayer, I guess. And hopefully he can pass his psyche vow so that he can get um, reconstructive surgery. I wonder what they'll use, like a big toe or a thumb or something. Like how are they going to rebuild that? Because they had to tear that shit out. I mean, they gutted his nether region. Ooh. He's probably going to be having to go to a psychiatric home. Because that is absolutely wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway, thank you guys for sharing these stories. I love them. Keep them coming. Send them to me. Well, um, <laughs> you know, I had a few things on here for us to talk about as topics, but I don't know if we have enough time before our guests get here for our next episode. So I wanted to just pick one, I guess. Um, okay. Did you watch the Risa Tisa video? There were people that like were in... I, my DMs, I don't know if they were in your DMs asking us to talk about it. And I was like, I haven't watched all of those 50 parts of videos. I have not. I did. I I, what did, I listened to it mm -hmm. like it was an audio book. Mm -hmm. And that's how I was able to get through it. It was like a nice little drama to listen while I was laying out on the beach. I mean, she's getting a um, lot of attention. She was she just is. on some news morning show. Mm -hmm. I listened to the whole story. I thought it was wild. And um, Can you give us a brief summary of it for me and the people who haven't watched it? She got played by somebody who she should have just did a background check on and she could have avoided a lot of things. And she also could have avoided it by um, not being so damn desperate. That's really what it boils down to. And she admits to it. Um, Basically, she met this guy right ahead of the world shutting down for oh, COVID. It was a COVID mistake. They moved in together really quickly. They got she got pregnant. They got married. She ended up um, not having the baby. She had a miscarriage, um, but that was God's saving grace, so Where that she, she wouldn't have to. Um, online mm. so she matched with him twice once on Facebook dating and then the other time I think she said hinge um no shade to Facebook dating but I don't know if I would be using Facebook dating I just I just don't know but she matched with him on two different apps didn't realize it they had a good first date um she had her tire blew on the way to the date to meet up with him so she called him 
And he came, he changed her tire, he took her to get a new tire, got it for her and everything. She thought he was a total gentleman. I think that that was God's way of telling you, you don't need to go on this date. And she said the same thing in hindsight, you know? Oh, God was trying to like spin Stop. her out of control and be like, certainly Stop. if I mess the tire, she gonna go home. Mm -hmm. She did but not. But then the devil came and said, can I get mm -hmm. you a new tire, baby? So the man that she ended up marrying had been telling her all of these lies, like really elaborate lies about who he was come to find out the career and the lifestyle that he was pretending to have was really that of his twin brothers the twin brother does not talk to him his older brother doesn't talk to him his family doesn't fuck with him he does have some sort of mental issues they did not say what they were so um, she never met his family she met some people in his family. I think she met like an aunt or something. And then the people that she thought she was meeting that were his siblings and stuff, that was a lie. They were like friends. And so they were friends like his brothers. But no one ever, they the, were the friends in on the lie or they just? Well, the friends had been being lied to as well. And so later as things are unfolding and she's reaching out to them, some people she could get in contact with. Some of them are like, yeah, and he owes me money. And basically he just has been bamboozling people. He's been marrying women for years he's had multiple marriages where he's lying to these women she found a couple of women it was just a bunch of stuff um and it's still up and available if you guys care to listen um but what i will say is she there were so many red flags and she admits to being stuck on this timeline of, I want to be married. When is it going to be my turn? I want to be married. I want that happily ever after. I want to be a mother. I want to have a kid. I want to do all of these things. And so then this person comes in love bombing her and lying to her. And so she's falling for it. She just fell for the okie doke. Mm -hmm. But when something doesn't feel right with somebody then maybe it's not. And you should not always ignore that feeling. And that's what she was doing for a really long time. And then she started making excuses for things that were happening. It was just such a wild thing. And I couldn't help but listen because so many people kept sending it to me. I hadn't really been on social media like that. And I don't be on TikTok. Um, but I had to get on there for that because I was just like, well, what is going on? And why is everybody talking about this and getting so worked up about it? What is the deal? I saw other people just... In St. Lucia, there I see them on their phones, and I see that lady's face on there, and I'm like, wow, this is crazy. The whole world is tuned in to this crazy story because you wouldn't think it's real, but you guys, y'all might think I'm playing when I say you need to be Googling people, doing a little background check. You should. Yes, you, you definitely just, should, but you also need to, like, this, y'all know I've said this on a bunch of different episodes. If you are, again, if this is, you're taking somebody seriously, cl clearly she was taking them seriously. If you're about to move in together, you need to meet people's families, and you need to be talking to people and asking questions. When somebody was watching it in Brazil, and she was saying that he said, correct me if I'm wrong, his somebody his dad owned a church or something his dad used to be a pastor but the dad was dead the mother was dead his grandmother was dead it was like relatives were dead and so he had these siblings but he was saying that he had certain siblings that she heard him talking to on the phone that man was talking to himself or somebody else um he had the friends that showed up and he said that these were his brothers they weren't really his brothers but the family he told her he had was not true so she's thinking she did meet some family. But she wasn't, the point I was trying to bring it back to was communicating and people feeling like you can't ask family members questions about who you are dating and living with and possibly about to marry or about to have a baby with. People People talking about Reese Tisa's story and there are people that are currently living that type of life right now where like you won't ask somebody's mom about how the, the, your boyfriend or your girlfriend was when they were younger, or just like asking certain key questions that to me are very vital to s somebody. Like I couldn't imagine COVID or not. Um, and she also said that they rushed a marriage because it was COVID and things mm. were shut down and she was pregnant. And because of her own feelings with her religion and uh, she didn't want to have a baby out of wedlock. And I'm just like, you guys. <laughs> I've got to cut it. You already fucked the man now. You just because like what? And it's like you you had all of these reasons, these excuses really as to why you let so much go on. And even when you knew that he was lying about some stuff because things happened al along this journey, you kept sweeping it under the rug. And y'all got to stop doing that. I think you definitely do need to talk to family, ask questions and 
and know people. And when something seems too good to be true or feels like something is afoot, look into that shit. Mm -hmm. And like, if you're come wrong, on. okay, you're wrong. But still. Yeah, but at least you know that you're wrong and you were just being a little paranoid because that happens too. And just because you have a feeling doesn't mean that you're right. But it's nothing wrong with looking into it. And then it, a red flag is every time you're about to meet somebody or you're about to do something, something catastrophic happens. Every time you on to him and, and you're about to present some evidence, somebody dies of COVID. Like, come on. <laughs> I really think that it boiled down to her being very desperate mm. um, and lonely. And it also didn't seem like she had very many like friends either. Mm. And I think that if she had more friends and not just the girl at work, uh, that might have helped to check in on your people and check in on who they say that they're falling for be a friend to somebody. I, I don't know. And you know people I, need help. There are a lot of people who do end up in those situations in real life and it sucks, but that one was just so crazy. And the man... He has seen her talking about him that, of course, the internet sleuths find the guy. So we see his Facebook. We see what he looks Does like. Does he look crazy? No, he doesn't. He doesn't look good, but he didn't look like what she was describing. And he didn't look like the person that he said he was. I'm just like, girl, what's going on here? But, you know, people have on their rose colored lenses. Anyway, he gets on TikTok and he on there lying, talking about he's filming a Netflix special and he's about to... Uh, sue her he's he obviously has issues he has a problem mm -hmm. and that's another thing where it's like when you <laughs> it's not it, can, it is not funny but when you are dating somebody have you ever met someone and you didn't get far with them because you realized something's wrong yeah like there's something wrong mentally and it's like mm -hmm. oh i'm not going on this journey with you homeboy yeah i have met much. people because there are some people where it's like you either are really attractive or mm -hmm. it's like something happened that connected us and you, you can go on be a charming date. yeah you get a private moment and something is just off mm -hmm. you're like oh. or i see a different personality it's like this is a totally different person i don't know what's going on in that head but mm -mm. remember the girl who wrote in and was talking about the man with all the entities and yes. mm -hmm. i wonder if it was him Hmm. I guess we'll never know. But yeah, it was a wild story. I mean, I just feel like it's been everywhere mm -hmm. and it was going on almost a month now. But I that is a wild is going to come careful. of her with this. Like what opera? Because it seems like she might get some. I don't know if people are well, using some her just the, for content or if she's going to actually make some money off of this. Um, I think that the way that TikTok monetizes, she couldn't monetize a lot of the story because of something she said. So she was like, all these people that are saying I made X amount of dollars, that's not true. But I know that she's going to get to go to some of the places that he promised her and lied to her about. Um, and like Hilton is sponsoring, companies are sponsoring and helping her to have the experience that he lied to her about. Now, when I hear stuff like that, can we get a hotel sponsorship? We was on tour for two and a half years trying to get a hotel sponsorship. Do we need to have us? Do we need to make a fifty-part story season I mean, instead we got of doing the show? Three hundred and eighty-something fucking episodes of our recent TV stories. I mean, wild. Like, yeah, it is wild, but um, <laughs> good for her, I guess. I mean, some of, the pain of her pain. Usually, it's nothing that we get from our pain. So, All and I hope get. she makes better choices in the future. I do. Or does does not date one or the other don't but don't do that shit again that was bad and i hope y'all don't do that if you feel like you in a situation like that uh baby please get out please get out and we have been saying this lately pay attention and it is not worth all this it's just yeah. not and like i just said but a second that ago timeline like you want to have timeline. your sanity you want to be able to have your life and you don't want to be living your life wondering who the fuck is this in my house and you don't want to have children and you got to explain why you picked this as their dad Oh, yeah, that too. It's just so many things. It's just a lot of things. It's like, you guys, it's just not worth it. Like, let's pay attention. Let's pay attention. There's somebody listening to this show right now that is dealing with somebody's ashy son or daughter, and mm -hmm. you know he and ain't right. And if you're right. scared to tell your family the truth about what's going on, you don't have to tell every single detail, but if you are actually scared inside to tell your sister, your mother, your daddy, anybody about the person that you're with that you're really trying to have a serious relationship with, mm -hmm. live with, 
That ain't the one. It ain't the one. And also, if you are if you are someone who everybody doesn't have a strong, solid foundation, and maybe you don't have family, and maybe you don't have friends, but I do think that it is important that somebody else lays eyes on or meets who you are dating or considering living with or marrying or having a life with if nobody else has met them because you might need to ask some some questions that you haven't asked yet and I, I guarantee you somebody else will ask those questions I do that all the time with people that I date and I have realized some things the dude who wrote the google page doc mm-hmm. my sister was immediately like he's something's wrong with him something mm-hmm. is wrong sometimes with this you man. don't see it because you are like oh you're Smitten. thinking about yeah you're thinking about or you might be depressed <laughs> that too you desperate whatever it could be and you don't see the things with other people who love and care about you can and or and or they might ask questions because i could have told her this they might ask questions a friend or a family member might ask a question that you haven't asked like okay mm-hmm. what do you see in her or what do you like about her somebody that you trust and if you don't have anybody what i was about to say was hit up me or kiki maybe we pull up and act like your sister act like your big cousin and okay. we'll ask some of those hard questions for you and i'm pretty sure we'll be able to say if he or if he ain't it okay because what Mm-mm. that ain't it Good luck, y'all. I think our guests are here, so we're going to move on to Indecisive Diane. And when we come back, you know what, wait. Before we move on to Indecisive Diane, I wanted to ask you a question. What? What did you think about some of the comments of people saying we were cutting off the divorce attorney too much? Oh, I was just like, um, well, I felt like it was taking her a long time to get to some of the answers. (laughs) And so we were running low on time. And so it's just like, come on, if you're not going to get to the answer, well, we can go on to another question because some of it felt like talking in circles a bit. I do think we did it some, but I was just kind of like, well, dang, okay. But I thought she answered some stuff. Like y'all didn't see anything? I, what did you think? I wholeheartedly enjoyed that episode. And I wanted to bring it up because you know, I love addressing things that I see. Um, and I... I personally wanted to say I was very excited and very proud of that episode and we both were very excited and we had a lot of questions that was like the one time that we had a guest on we were like oh shit we got a lot of questions to ask and I think it's very important for everybody who listens to this free show and some people get mad when I say that because they're like well you still need listeners and you're right we do and I appreciate everybody who listens to the show and supports it in a healthy way but it's still a free show so if you are not on our Patreon community and you really want your voices to be heard and possibly considered then join Patreon I also saw somebody say something about she should have charged us um, for all of the questions that we asked and I'm like she came on the show. She knew what the show was. And the whole point was we were asking these questions. We don't need a consultation. Neither of us are married. Yeah. And so, also when and people say stuff like that, if you really were thinking about charging anybody when it comes to a popular podcast, we should be charging guests to come on here because you get a it's like lifetime you have a of marketing. And people <laughs> are going to come to you for that. Like I People don't have know. already hit her up. She let, she let me know that. So it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, no, it's like a, it's a fair trade. Yeah. I don't know how people think these things work. I don't know. I don't they know, don't. but oh well. Um, I hope that if you do have questions that you would like answered, and you're thinking about getting a divorce, contact her if you're in the state of Georgia, and maybe she can help you out. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. thank y'all for that. Was I really love that episode? Thank you for the positive criticism, and we'll try to do better with cutting people off. But I personally was really excited and had a real lot of yeah. questions. We do be getting excited. Mm-hmm. We get excited just like y'all get excited to see people. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to indecisive Diane. Don't let spring cleaning fool you. There's always space to add a little extra something in the bedroom. It's no secret that consuming a little THC can help set the mood in the bedroom. However, getting the right strain and dosage can be difficult. That's why we're so thankful for today's sponsor, Vaya. Vaya has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy and that's high love you guys i mean we love high love so much and the listeners love high love so much that y'all have been writing us cocktails including the high love gummies talking about thank Mm -hmm. you we getting testimonials (laughs) from the listeners yeah and speaking of testimonials let me tell you high love is great i took it after a date i don't like to be out Mm. when i've had it because just i don't know how long i'm gonna be out and i don't need to get too hot and bothered while i'm still out but i had a date and after the date i had the gummy on the way home and we had a wonderful night. It just feels good. It made me feel relaxed. It made me feel like every touch was way more sensitive. It was just a great experience. I highly recommend the high love. And also like my anxiety has been 
on a whole nother level probably the past six months. Mm -hmm. And they have gummies for that as well. They have gummies for everything. They have gummies to relax. They have gummies to focus. I like those too. Um, they have gummies that I feel like the dreams makes my dreams more vivid. Mm -hmm. Like a and little I, show. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoy that. Um, I just think you guys have to try them because they have so many different products. And whether you're into THC or not, they have products that range from two milligram dosage to 50 milligrams. They have a CBD line with no THC. They have so many different products, so many different gummies, and they have other things on their website too. It's in, the link is in the description. You guys gotta check it out. You guys gotta check it out. Kiki went on a date and now we probably gonna get a, a, a high love cocktail. <laughs> oh, <Well. laughs> let the gummies work their magic. If you're 21 and up, check out the link to Via in our description and use the code cocktails to receive 15% off and a free sample. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? What do you want? Hey ladies, it's me, Diane, coming to you with a fresh new date idea for all my AD aliens. So listen, do you like Shakespeare? No? <laughs> Well, learn to. They have a Shakespearean tavern playhouse downtown in Atlanta. Google it. You can have dinner in the theater while watching a little bit of old-fashioned Shakespeare being acted out. Try it out. Tell me how you like it. Bye. back from indecisive diana and it's time for the advice if you have a question that you would like for us to answer on this show please email it to us advice at cocktailspod.com i guess we have time for one so you want to read yours or you want me to read it i'll read it okay okay so this was actually a follow-up okay and i think i already read it and i absolutely loved this i love when we get certain follow-ups and we actually remember it because this did kind of take a toll and you could be shocked if you write in an advice letter and, and every hundreds of people start commenting on the clip if it makes it as oh, a clip so this yeah. was the girl who was in puerto rico and asked the white man to buy her a drink oh yes how so, could we forget because people how could we still commenting her? on that shit and if you will go to your email and pull up she sent a text and i forwarded it to both of us it's a text thread and i'm gonna go to so we can read it when we get to that point okay so she said follow up date bay or leave it be hello ladies i'm a true fan and i've been listening to you ladies for literally years now so i'm feeling a pull to follow up I wrote in a few weeks ago about a white man I was dating in a seriously harmless, flirty moment. I asked him to pay for my drink while on vo vacation in Puer Puerto Rico with a girlfriend. He said no and ended up making me feel like I was a gold digger or just <laughs> trying to take from him. And, I t and it totally turned me off. This advice letter over a drink ended up on an Instagram clip. I can't lie. I was surprised. And you guys slandered me. We did not slander you. <laughs> um, do you know what slander means, honey? <laughs> Because <laughs> cool it. <laughs> you wrote in for advice oh on a podcast. <laughs> she, you did. And, and you know, and sometimes. And that's what happens. Nobody knows who you are. And that's we when don't you say really do get the best advice. I feel like if you have two, you trust us already and you we don't know you. And so we're going to give you the raw advice that sometimes you really do need. And so will the people in the comments. Oh, they go above and beyond. Whew. Okay. And you guys slandered me. Maybe I hadn't explained things right, I thought. Hmm. You ladies called me broke. You called me young. And you called me young-minded. Well. Although both young, I'm 25. Um, or both are, wait, I don't know what that means. All both young, 25 and 27. I don't know. Maybe him. We have pretty promising careers. I am a registered. Maybe her and her friend. Okay, Maybe. I am a registered dietitian, and he is a plumber. Oh. Um, plumbers do be making back now. I felt wrong and embarrassed for seeing what he would spend on me and tried to continue. I tried to continue dating him. 
Maybe I was wrong, and the incel male commenters you ladies were agreeing with on your Instagram were right. Maybe I was being superficial. Maybe I went about expressing acts of service wrong. I really feel like she is really confused, and that's why I'm, I hope I'm reading the tone right. Okay. I started just taking it slow and watching to see how he may want to pursue me. Even though the that's same person, the same person. Like she didn't when she didn't look at what she was doing. Like it was how he responded. She didn't think it was wrong. D did you just want us to agree with you? I think she might be a little bit um, naive. That's what I'm taking because she really okay. seems like she doesn't understand what happened. Okay. Okay. So, um, so you might be sure sues me, even though. Okay, I started just taking it slow and watching to see how he may want to pursue me, even though that's what I was doing. The drink was the first time I'd asked him for anything, and I really didn't think it would spark so much controversy. And from our other dates, I thought it would be no problem. Y'all weren't on a date. That's the problem. Up until recently, we would go on weekly, bi-weekly dates, text daily, and have really, really, really good sex. I listened to his after-work plumber rants, caressed his hair, and watched football games that I don't give two fucks about. I've tried to be good for him. It's February 13th, this is old, and Valentine's Day was not mentioned at all, ever. Of course, I was disappointed that he hadn't brought it up and just kind of let it go. Maybe he's not into those things, question mark? Valentine's with my girlfriends will be fulfilling, I thought. I think, um, oh, to think the guy I've been primarily dating hasn't made any plans with me, kind of sucked but I rolled with it and charged it to the game. This is really how people are out here. D d okay, he proceeded to tell me on the, t on the 13th that he took tomorrow, Valentine's Day, off just in case he wanted, to sp um, he wanted to spend the day with a lovely friend, just in case though. <laughs> what a way to make me feel. What do I make of this as the girl that's, being, that's been sexing and exclusively mutually dating him? I just let him talk. He begins to spew all of these projections on me. I'll tell you ladies, oh, I'll let you ladies read the rest of these messages. Just for context, I never brought up Valentine's Day once and this felt totally left field. Um, did, you, did you find the email? Mm -hmm. Let me pull it up, hold on. I think, is it follow bay or something? It What's says, it? yeah, follow up, date bay or leave it be. Okay, hold on. I just can't believe that there are people that, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so you be the guy, I'll okay. be her. So she's the blue. No, it's definitely a holiday I actually dislike. I feel like it's all pressure, no fun. That's just my perspective. Oh, that actually makes me sad. But I guess I can see that from a man's perspective. I mean, maybe my answer was too harsh. Laughing emoji. What you laughing for? <laughs> it does feel good making... The damn errors. It does feel good making your so, in all caps, happy. But that's just my previous experiences. These are multiple messages back to back to back, you guys. Um, I'm open to having good ones in the future that could change my feelings about Valentine's Day. Closed eyes, smiley face. That sounds like he wants you to make a plan, but anyway. Um, I'm talking about how some women have unfair expectations for Valentine's Day when they aren't giving nearly the same effort for their man. And you got to compete versus what Instagram doing is doing. Men want to feel special too. If we're going to do multiple dates and surprises and gifts and blowing up 50 balloons, LOL. If I can find someone who can show me that side of Valentine's Day that I haven't had, I might start looking forward to it instead of dreading it. Well, I'm just taking it in a little because, oh, well, oh, I'm just taking no. it. No, would you want to be wait, at wait. the top of that picture? Because I didn't read just something. It's a message. It's a blue message before that. No, it's right not. here. There's two. She sent two messages. Okay, we got okay, okay. Well, I'm just taking it in a little because I'm not. I'm not a man, so I don't know these experiences. She's really trying to understand, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about that. Um, how would you want to feel special in an instance like this? IDK, I've never gotten anything for Valentine's. A gift would be cool. I can't imagine being taken on a date for Valentine's. I'd be shocked, laughing my ass off. Would you want to be taken on a date or is it more so like you just wanting something to be done for you? 
Just something to be done for me would be enough. I won't ask for much. Well, that's understandable. Oh, that sounds so sad. <laughs> I don't believe Valentine's Day should be one-sided. You're a real, you're a real one with the, the cool face emoji. How have your past Valentines been? And that's the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Then she continues her letter. He called me a real one. You ladies know what that means. And then proceeds to ask, first of all, ain't he white? And don't a real one really mean like a real nigga? That's how I always thought. <laughs> okay. I, I, mm. Okay. You ladies know what that means. And then proceeds to ask me how my Valentine's Day had gone. I've never had a Valentine's Day. 70% of what he said sounded like a fresh, a fresh and fit. I don't know what that means. Or whoever <laughs> the fuck. It's a podcast. Okay. Or whoever the fuck podcast snippet. Oh, I acted cool in the messages, but I feel like the Puerto Rico instance was a foreshadowing of a bitch-made man. Was he implying that I should take him out for Valentine's Day? Yeah. It's not I only think he said it pretty he, much. He, he took it out. He took the day off in case he was going to spend it with a lovely female friend, you. And then he proceeded to say, if we're doing all of these dates, I would like a day where I feel special. If he's been taking you on all these dates. You said he's been taking you on all these dates. So he's like, I took the day off. He wants to. Sp he's open to spending it with you, but you didn't make no plans. You just kept saying, oh, that's sad. And it, it's all sad, really. This it is, is all sad, and you, you was right. I'm not. That. We're not trying to slander you, sis. You about to be like Risa Tisa if you continue <sighs> dating like this, because this is wildly insane that you are accepting behavior like this I'm from a man. You even that any of this continued after the whole drink fiasco. I, and that's what I'm saying. We got to. We gotta. We have to get up and walk out of delusionitisville. And a lot of women have a problem with that because there's also now all this rhetoric where women are trying to make sure men are heard and you want to be understanding and you want to communicate in a healthy way. But in a healthy way, this communication that he was doing, it's mean. And he's trying to bamboozle you into tricking off on him. And really what needs to be done is he just needs to speak up. And if he, it sounds like he's been doing things for you that he doesn't feel comfortable with. And so that is already a recipe for disaster. Everybody trying to, what are you doing? Anyways, should I be the one to have to, to, have to bring up Valentine's Day plans on our fifth or sixth month of dating? Should I be the one paying for his drinks? Just so it's not assumed that this is one-sided. I've treated him on a date for setting up things in my house, often make him cookies just because I like to bake and That's got nice. him a little cute, thoughtful gift for Christmas. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. Not to count favors, but just in instances to express I'm not a stingy girl. And I believe her. Pursuit felt mutual in my eyes for a traditional cisgendered relationship. Ladies listening, ask for... Um, Ask for him to pay for your fucking drink and be weary of listening to people who so <laughs> easily stereotyped you into a broke black girl who can't afford a drink while on a vacation in Puerto Rico. Maybe they're just projecting what they've experienced and you'll spend Valentine's Day having no sex instead of with wasted time on a man who wouldn't pay for a $15 drink because now I'm disappointed and sad. I don't know if she was kind of trying to take a dig at us at that point. She was. Let me tell you something. You saying <laughs> that because now you didn't... Uh, girl... For real, we were trying to help you and save you from this whole fiasco that you just had. You asked the man to pay for your drink while you were away from him. Yes, he had paid for it. Yes, it was $15. I'm not calling you a broke black bitch. I'm not doing that. And it's not about whether you have it or not. You wanted him to do something. But the thing is, he probably feels like I'm not even on the trip with you. Why would I send you a little bit of money, less than $20 for you to get a drink? If he wanted to do something like that, if he wanted to buy you a, a drink while you were on vacation, he would. Let people treat you to things that they want to treat you to. And if you wanted to take him out for Valentine's Day, you should have. I'm glad you didn't because this is a dub. You need to just end that, okay? And then secondly, it's like you're saying whatever about the people in the comments and not listening. You should have listened to us mm -hmm. again. You should have listened to us because we told you. And y'all need to be direct. You're asking us about what's going on and how he feels. And you could have asked him how he felt. Did it turn you off when I asked you that? Because I wasn't trying to take advantage I just 
I just wanted you to get me a little drink. I wanted to and see also, where we were. In the text message where he was saying how he wanted to be treated as a man on Valentine's Day, it's also okay if you're not okay with it. If you're yeah. saying like, hey, so I, and I'm not saying if, that somebody is right or somebody is wrong. I'm saying you have to stay true to your feelings. How yes. I date personally is if I feel like me or the person I'm dating is going out of the bounds of what they have created for what they will do for a person. And now I'm kind of trying to make them do something that I am used to. That's not going to work for me yeah, because that's not, not being, it's not a match and you're not being true to yourself. And now we're playing this game of I did this for you and now you got to do this for me. I don't want to play that game. It is not fun, as you can see. Yeah, so it's not. Nobody was trying to make fun of you. We are trying to help you. This does not make sense as a grown woman that you can't ask someone what you doing for Valentine's. I mean, it, it, if you wanted to do something with him and he didn't make the plans, you should know that y'all not doing shit because it's the day before and he hasn't given you any plans. And that's just what it is. And to your point of people trying to do things and trying to make somebody, it's like you got somebody's attention and now you're trying to make Make them be yeah. the person in your head instead of saying this isn't going to work and moving on and going to another person. There's other fish in the sea. There are people the out here, men you. and women, that enjoy celebrating Valentine's Day and you don't have to bamboozle them or be nervous that the day is coming up and they're going to be like, dang, this is a man. -made. There are people that enjoy celebrating each other, whether you've known yeah. each other a month, six months or six years. They're just like, I care about what you ca I care about you enough to want to make you happy. He doesn't care that much. I'm not so saying he don't he like you, but he doesn't care enough to be like, I want to see you smile on Valentine's Day. He and wants you to make him smile on Valentine's Day. Yeah. And you don't feel comfortable with treating a man like a bitch. Well, I was just going to say, when you text him, uh, give us another follow-up because I know you're going to hit him back and let us know how the post-Valentine's Day conversation went and what you actually end up doing. Please, I want you to not hit him up, but I feel like you're going to do it anyway. She's probably is engaged at this point. <laughs> Absolutely not. Not the way he ain't trying to do shit. No, no engagement. <laughs> these are the, but these are prime examples of the moments that we be talking about when people are like, like people are like, you're trying Missing to sign. Yeah, you're and you're purposely ignoring the signs. You're purposely ignoring the signs because you want a white boyfriend. I mean, that's what it feels like to me. You want to have mixed babies. You got the white man, and now you're like, I locked him in. I gotta keep him. And you didn't lock nothing in. Not even that Puerto Rican drink. Harriet no Tubman is rolling around in her, in, her, in her little slave clothes in her, in her grave. <sighs> she did not. Anyway. It is Women's History Month. Act right. When you guys send in your advice emails, remember that that can be a part of the clips that's on Instagram. And people will comment. Just like y'all comment and have things to say about what we say. They're going to have comments about the stuff that y'all write in about. And that's just a part of it. But we will always keep you anonymous. Always. So send it in to us at vice at cocktailspod.com. We appreciate it. And now it is time to move on to the cocktails. If you have a cocktail that you would like to share, please email it to us, cocktails at cocktailspod.com. Okay, seven rounds in 24 hours, must read. Hey ladies, I love the show and I listen while at work every day. Now to my juicy cocktail. I am 20 years old and until yesterday, I was seven months celibate. I had to take time to heal, but as you both know, a bitch get horny. LOL, I didn't get... I didn't want to gain a new body. So what did I do? Text my Caribbean ex. So I had to act fake like I wanted some things I left at his house back when we were together. We talked and texted for a couple of days, but I was getting tired of playing games and I texted him exactly what I wanted to do. And of course he was down. So then yesterday comes, I prepared myself, shaved, showered, and just made sure everything was good to go for the dick I knew I was going to get. So I fast forward to the actual juicy part. We laying in the bed and it was a little warm. So as one does, I slide off my PJs and he took the bait as expected. He started slapping my ass and kissing all down my neck. He tells me to take them off. And you know what I did? Took them right on off. He proceeded to bend me right over in front of him and fuck me from the back. He's kissing my neck, choking me, and everything else possible. 
Now, I remember his dick being good, but never did I remember it being this damn good. Mm. After about 10 minutes, he turns me over on my back where he lifts my legs up and folds me like an Auntie Anne's pretzel. I used to love those pretzels. The cinnamon sugar? Yes, that was my favorite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At this point, I'm going crazy and he's he's loving making eye contact. And then after a while, he nuts at me and... Oop. And then falls asleep on top of me. We both get situated and fall asleep for the night just to wake up in the morning and do it six more times with naps and breaks in between. This was my first ever experience doing more than two rounds in 24 hours. And when I am tired, girl, I am tired. Sorry if it was too long. XOXO, a boy named Nyquil. <laughs> Nyquil. That's how I was saying. Nyquil. <laughs> I like that. Seven uh, rounds in 24 hours? That's no, man. That's a long time. That's long. Ooh, or a lot of rounds. Oh, Jesus. My pussy is getting swollen just thinking about it. It hurts. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for sending in that cocktail. Remember, again, if you guys want to send in a cocktail, email it to us, cocktails at cocktailspod.com. And we are out of time today, but we'd like to remind you guys to make sure you check the description box of the episode to see links to everything that we discussed today, all of our sponsors everything else we have going on sign up for patreon it's patreon.com slash cocktails new bonus content every single week and monthly lives um follow us on instagram i'm at kiki said so i'm at coffee bean dean and until next time you guys goodbye goodbye bye 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 Bye. Sweet on the dry. Bye. 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 Bye.